Danke. Are we ready? Are you okay? <coughs> oh. Stand this a little. Is the one you start? Yes.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are ready to, to start. Uh, good morning. My name is Franz Ntombeni from the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming through. Uh, you are welcome to this briefing session. We also would like to welcome the viewers and listeners who are joining us from our various social media platforms, as well as the colleagues from the media fraternity who are also joining us online. Ladies and gentlemen, we are meeting here at the invitation of the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies, our Honorable Kumbudzon Chabeng, who has invited us here to give us a briefing on progress that we have made uh, with the broadcast digital migration program as well as the analog switch off. The minister is joined in this briefing by the COO of Centec, who is also the project leader of the broadcast digital migration program, Mr. Tebofo Lishope. We also have a number of uh, senior officials from the department who are joining us here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to give this opportunity to the Honorable Minister to brief the people of South Africa on progress we have made. Honorable Minister. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Mtombeni. It's nice to not have a mask. <laughs> First time. The last time we updated the nation on the developments involving broadcast digital migration, commonly known as BDM, and the analog switch off was on the 28th of April 2022. At that time of that briefing, the telecommunications regulator, ICASA, had set the 1st of July 2022 as the date for the release of Spectrum to the licensees. It also, at that time, ETV had appealed the constitutional court, uh, to the, at the constitutional court, the Gauteng High Court ruling that favored the measures taken by the minister towards the conclusion of the much delayed broadcast digital migration. The minister has defended the appeal in the concord in the national interest, and we are awaiting the decision of the constitutional court. To supplement efforts by the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition on driving penetration of digital television and to protect consumers from buying outdated analog television sets that are still in the market, the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies has published guidelines for integrated digital television, IDTVs, and set-top boxes with regards to the use of the Go Digital logo. This will assist consumers to identify digital televisions in retail stores using the Go Digital logo. As previously communicated, we have concluded analog switch off and migration for the SABC in the five provinces of Free State, Northern Cape, Northwest, Mpumalanga, Lim and Limpopo provinces. And I must indicate the migration is those provinces are fully migrated, but the analog switch off was for the SABC. Therefore, ICASA will be able to release the high demand spectrum in these provinces as of the 1st of July 2022. The release of the spectrum will enable telecommunications operators to decongest the networks through the deployment of 4G and 5G networks across the country. South Africans, irrespective of where they live, have in recent days experienced poor connectivity, including on voice calls, due to increased loads on the networks. We are therefore eagerly awaiting the Concord decision on the analog switch of days for us to conclude broadcast digital migration. This will allow us to release spectrum in Gauteng, Western Cape, KZN, Eastern Cape, and Eastern Cape. Unfortunately, until the analog switch off is concluded, the country's economic hubs of Gauteng and KZN will remain with poor network connectivity with negative impact to the economy of the country and also to the general citizens of the country. We are pleased to announce that we have completed set-top box, uh, set box installations in the provinces of Free State, Northern Cape, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, and Gauteng. We are currently in the mop-up phase for the Western Cape and Northwest to verify completion status because SAPO does not have additional addresses to give us four installations. The floods, as previously indicated, have severely impacted the set-top box installation rate in the provinces of KZN and Eastern Cape. This is due to damages of beneficiary houses and road infrastructure that has led to inaccessibility of some communities. 
As a result, as of the 21st of June 2022, a total of 109,270 beneficiary households remains unconnected in the two provinces. We continue to coordinate with the Department of Human Settlements and other infrastructure departments to ensure installations to beneficiary households are resumed as and when the relevant infrastructure is restored. In this regard, I, I, allow me to extend our appreciation to the teams that are continuing to do installations to areas where they must walk distances because of the damages on the roads and the bridges because the, car, the areas have become impassable. We really appreciate their efforts and their diligence. We have also commenced with installations for the end of September targets across five provinces that have completed by the, uh, uh, before 30 June with Western Cape and Northwest yet to commence because of the mop-up that we are concluding this weekend. To date, we have installed for the September targets over 44,224 households that are due for uh, installations by 30 September 2022. And we, continue to, we are continuing to increase our capacity to install more set-top boxes per day to ensure that the quickest rate of installations for post ASO registration is in place. This will help us to connect to new registrations with a much more improved rate. However, since after 31st March 2022, the project had continued to experience a decline in the number of new registrations. With the support of the DTIC and our complementary efforts, we continue to create a conducive environment for increased availability of appropriate digital television sets and set-top boxes in the retail market. This means households not qualifying for government support can self-migrate without relying on subscription television. We also wish to remind those households earning below a total of 3,500 per month that applications for registrations are still open. I thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. Thank you for the briefing. Minister has crisscrossed the country, ladies and gentlemen, in the nine months after Cabinet had approved the revised BDM project. So um, we are now are going to open the session for questions. Uh, we're going to do it like this. Can we have three questions, maybe online or do we, if we have questions online coming, Vanessa will assist us with the questions that are online, and colleagues that are here in the house will then ask uh, also their questions. Let's have the first round of five questions, and thereafter we will take the, the, the next round. Can you please introduce yourself, your name, and the media house that you're representing, and then put your question as succinctly as you possibly can. Uh, uh, thanks. By show of hands, can we go? We go first, uh, number one, number two. Do we have questions online, Vanessa? There's one coming through. One coming through, okay, let's take three questions that are, are in the house, then we'll continue the next uh, round of questions, maybe with the questions that uh, uh, are still coming through from online. In that order, one, two, three, please introduce yourself and the media house that you're presenting, and then put your question as succinctly as you possibly can, thanks. Good morning. My name is Benjamin Chan. I'm here to listen to the news. Um, if the minister may, may speak clearly, are we only having an analog kickoff mm -hmm. for the five provinces that have completed uh, the digital migration, or what's going to happen to the others remaining? And the last time the deadline is was for the national analog kickoff, uh, kick and now if you are saying five provinces, where does it leave the other provinces, and when is the next? deadline for the full um, uh, national kickoff. Thanks, Philly. Yeah. <coughs> Good morning, colleagues. My name is Aseri Ndobu. I'm coming from Capital Live Radio. Uh, Minister, can you maybe assist us by clarifying mm -hmm. how does one or how do you as a department gauge if the whole province for example, the, the three state province, as you said, is complete. How do you gauge uh, that the whole province, including the deep rural areas, uh, are covered in those areas? Number two, uh, 
uh, with the rate of uh, things going up, prices ri rising, does <coughs> government have a plan or something going on currently um, that the spectrum that has been freed, the government will also have a share for people that can't afford, if it happens, the private service provider uh, hikes prices anyway. I don't know if that is clear. Uh, uh, maybe. The are you referring to cost to communicate? No, that's yeah. fine. Okay, that's fine. sure. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. All right. The third question? Thanks. Mr. Harris, Groven from uh, CNCA. Um, I'd just like to know exactly this sentence is point three three point one that we are pleased to announce it's completed the set set top box installations in those provinces which have had interest in Popo, Mpumalanga and Kauke. I I just like to know how many set top boxes have you installed? between the last update and today, and, and uh, what, what figure marks the completion of the installation in those provinces? And then secondly, is it correct that you're going to switch it off on the 1st of July in these other provinces here? And do you, is that correct, that you've mentioned that you'll switch it off in Northern Cape and Popo and Pumalanga? Um, and, and how many households have you calculated will be left outside of those that haven't got set-top boxes, but you believe that all households in that province uh, have set-top boxes too. Is that Thank you. Okay. So that's the first round of questions. Um, I would give it to the Honourable Minister. Thank you for the questions. You know, yesterday when we were finalizing the media statement, they advised me to say we must start the statement from the beginning of the briefings. So, and I said, no, everybody knows the status. And then as I preferred a shorter version because it's, in, it's a build up to all the, station, uh, the statements. But I realized I should have uh, listened to the good advice of the team. Colleagues, we switched off free state on the 1st of November 2021. We then switched off Limpo uh, Northwest in December, on the 23rd of December 2021. We switched off Mpumalanga Limpopo on the, no, and then we switched off Northern Cape in also in, in December, I can't remember the exact date. We switched off Mpumalanga in February, Limpopo in February and Mpumalanga in February. So those provinces have long been switched off. By the time we went to court in February, those province, in March, those provinces were already switched off. If you go back to the court judgment of uh, the Houting High Court, they indicated that because we have already switched off, there are numbers that were not installed who had in applied on time, which is the cutoff date was the 31st of October. And they said, you must make sure that when you are finishing off, you must prioritize installing in the numbers of those provinces that you have already switched off because they were outstanding numbers. Because at that time we were switching off at a 70% threshold and not at a 100% threshold. So we were left with a few numbers and that's when we, we were switched off. I remember in Free State we switched off about above 90%. Yeah. The others we have switched off about a, above 80% of the installations. So those five provinces which are Free State, Northern Cape, Northwest, Limpopo, and Pumalanga are already switched off. Equally, those five provinces we have already completed what we call migration or D to D migration, which is the risk taking of the spectrum. So, if you if you are a technology person or an engineer, when you go and look at the spectrum below one gigahertz to seven hundred or to six ninety four megahertz that spectrum does not have broadcasting in it, in the five provinces. 
That's what we are talking about to say we are going to theft. Well, it's, ICASA will then be able to release that spectrum to the telcos. Remember, the telcos have bought the, uh, various bands or uh, blocks in the various bands, so they'll give them that spectrum to use. I'm hoping that is clear to everybody. So the provinces that had not been switched off were the provinces of Gauteng, Western Cape, KZN, and Eastern Cape. The Gauteng High Court said, Minister, because there are these people who you have still not in, uh, uh, installed, who are entitled to the, for the installation because they had applied by the 31st of October 2021, delay that switch off of those provinces to the 30th of June 2022. This is where we are. So five provinces have already been switched off, four provinces have not been switched off. And what we are raising in this briefing is that this country, and you know uh, for fact, this country has two economic hubs, which is Gauteng and KZN. The Gauteng and KZN have not been switched off, and the networks remain congested. And they will not decongest until we switch off. When we switch off, Centec takes between a month and six weeks to complete the migration. So if we switch off by the 30th of June, Centec will then complete the D2D migration or the risk taking by the second week of August. And that spectrum will then be released. So that's what we are communicating here. So I hope on that, on, on that question, because it caters for the question of both capital and SABC and also ENCA. So by the 1st of July, in fact, by the 30th of June, it, we are dependent on what the constitutional court decides to switch off everybody. But there's an agreement between the SABC and Centec around the switch offs. As we complete particular areas, they must do the verification and do the switch off. And how it's switched off, we are, not, we are dealing with people who have applied. And I've indicated this since I started to take this podium to brief the nation that Analog technology is what we call dumb or stupid technology. Sitting here on analog, I can't tell you who has an analog TV, who doesn't have an analog TV. And the Gauteng High Court correctly ruled that if people who are on analog TV do not come up and apply, there is no way of government knowing whether they have or they do not have. And it's not correct that every indigent person or every poor household is using an analog television because digital televisions have been in the market in South Africa since 2012. And therefore, some households that are indigents are sitting on digital televisions. And the, if you have a digital television, you do not have to have a set of box because the network, the digital terrestrial network or the digital network in its totality has penetrated this country. There's no part of this country that does not have a digital, uh, a digital network. So if you are in your home and you have a smart television, you are able, except for mountainous areas, you are able to go to your TV and do auto-tune or manual tune and get your digital uh, uh, channels. You don't need a set-top box. And that's the message we've been communicating, that there is no need for set-top boxes with the current advancement in technology on TV sets. It's only for those who have old TVs, very old TV sets, analog TV sets. And those ones, the Minister of uh, Trade, Industry and Competition has now prohibited the importation and distribution of those TV sets in this country. But because we are aware that those TV sets remain in the market in the country, we have then gone further to say for a consumer, as you go into your store, your retail shop to buy a digital television, that television will carry a Go Digital sticker. We met with the uh, importers and distributors and manufacturers of TVs in the country. We agreed that the digital television sets will have a sticker that says Go Digital. And um, I, it's unfortunate. I thought it would not be appropriate for me to be sporting my sporty <laughs> of, of Go Digital logo. But the Go Digital logo has become very famous in this country. In addition, the Minister of Trade, Industry, and Competition had required the manufacturers and distributors of TV sets, acknowledging that there are still analog TV sets that have already been important that are in the market, 
to mark those as analog TV and to indicate that analog TV are not useful for TV broadcasting in this country. Then there was the question of saying, is the spectrum for poor people? Spect uh, poor, even if I give poor people spectrum, they will not be able to do anything with it. Spectrum is way airwaves, but what, um, we understand what the question means. Spectrum that has currently been released has been released for the telcos, and we continue to put measures to, pry, to push down the cost of communication. There will be a slight hike now as they deploy, but they, ultimately the prices are going to go down. We are going to release a new policy on spectrum for the country. That policy should be released uh, by end of July. We are consulting, which indicate a provision for spectrum for the state digital infrastructure company, which the regu supporting regulations will come through for that. Because we accept the responsibility that we cannot leave our fate and the fate of the country on the hands of the telecommunications operators that are commercially driven when we, we hold as a department and government a state digital infrastructure company that has a, a responsibility to make sure that all South Africans have access to, um, uh, to technology. And it's, uh, for that reason, we've committed that by 2024, all South Africans will have access to the internet, and we said they must have access, and you are aware of the discussion of free basic data, which will come out with the proposal in the policy by end of July for, con uh, for public cons uh, comments. It will then indicate what is our proposal or how we deal with the free basic data, because data has become the economic driver. using other people's gadgets. <laughs> Unless they you want to uh, deal with the numbers that we had to, to install in the, in the various provinces where we say we've completed. And to indicate, w w in terms of what we s when we say we've completed, we deal with the households that have applied. If you have not applied, we, we don't know where you are. So it's only those that have applied that we install. And that's why we continue to call for people to come and apply. So if they do not apply, we have no way of knowing where they are and who they are and whether they qualify. So as they apply, and that's why we have, from the beginning, always called upon the media, including the community media, and also we are doing campaigns with the SABC. We've paid the money for those campaigns to make sure that they continue to broadcast a message that if you, a household earn less than 3,500 per month, they must apply because they qualify for a government assistance with a set top box. Thank you, Tebo. Over to you. We'll deal with the numbers. Good morning, uh, colleagues. Morning, viewers out there. Yeah, uh, there will be two questions that I'll be addressing. I think one is from uh, Mr. Nlofu from Capital Live Radio, and then the other one, just to add on what Minister said in terms of the question that came from uh, ENCA. Mr. Nlofu asks a question: How do you ensure that the province is covered? What measures are in place to 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 determine that? The migration model that we approved uh, when we revised the approach uh, had, was anchored around uh, five pillars, uh, that of creation of awareness, telling people what has to happen and going out to the people there, and then registering households. So the process of registering households determines per province how many indigent households are registered. That is the first step uh, there. And then we have the pillar of the actual installations of the set-top boxes against the registered households that have applied. That is how we determine who gets installed in a particular province. The installations are followed by a process of quality assurance, where after we go to the installations that have been installed to determine that they are of good quality and the numbers that are represented are true and correct where after we then switch off on the basis of the comfort that we draw from those numbers that have been registered and that have been installed. And then the last pillar is, of course, of support, 
after the installations have been done, we continue to support those households. If they have any problem or challenge, they have a number to call to say I have a challenge and that installations get revisited or replaced to ensure that there is continuity of service uh, for those households. And then the other question uh, relates to what figure marks completion. At the time of the development of the model colleagues, we also did our own analysis to develop insights of how does the lay of things in terms of households looks like. In the analysis itself, we determined that majority of South Africans to the tune of 76% of the 14 million households that we have have self-migrated via satellite technology and or maybe has a right to choose. So in some cases they have made a choice already. From the department we have an option. If you so prefer to roll back and come and register, we will provide, provide a set of box and we remain committed. The registrations are still open to, uh, for household that comes and register. We will install them. It doesn't matter when they register. Till such time that the minister says stop on the applications of registrations. We will not uh, stop to uh, take new registrations and install those uh, particular households. Now, in terms of the households per province, at the time of the court ruling, as Minister says, that there was the end of June target, we had already installed against the baseline of the registered households 660,661 at the time uh, in March. We were then dealing with the phase of what is remaining against the overall registered household, which determined two targets of end of June and end of September. So in our determination, there was then uh, in consideration of which households are not reachable, not uh, the, those that we cannot find. And uh, some, of course, contributed by uh, uh, deceased and uh, have migrated, we determined for each of these provinces who is reachable and installed those particular households. So for the provinces that we were talking about in terms of the free state, after the consideration of uh, uh, the factors affecting the, we had then to install 4,000 in the free state to add up to the uh, 660, 22,000 in the northwest, 4,000 in the northern Cape, uh, 9,000 uh, in the Pumalanga, and then Limpopo 9,000, and then 124 in the Eastern Cape, 121 KZN, 60,000 in uh, Western Cape, and 33,000 in Haute. When we say we have completed a project, uh, an installation in a province, it talks to these numbers, uh, colleagues. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the clarity, Honorable Minister and COO. Um, we will then take the next round of the online questions. Um, we have three questions so far, Jeff, but ENCA uh, would like um, a receipt of the figures. Because uh, last one changed from the email. No, we'll get them offline. Yeah. Okay. No, you, you will be able to get them offline. Okay. okay. We have two questions from Thabo Mulugwane from Power FM News. Um, it's for the Minister. With mop-up operations still underway in KZN after the flood, some of the houses that were damaged have not been rebuilt yet. Is there a mm. plan to revisit that province? And what will be the plan moving forward for most households? Uh, okay. The second question is on raising awareness, which I believe the Minister already covered. Um, is it still from Tabo? Yes. Okay. And then the last question is from Kakhelani from my broadband. It sounds like the full set off will not happen on the 30th of June with KZN, and Gauteng, and Western Cape running behind. What is the new analog set off target date? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for the questions. As I've indicated in the statements, in KZN, Eastern Cape, and now portions of the Western Cape because of the, the floods of last week, we continue to install as and when the, the mop-up is done, the rebuild is done. In the statement, we clearly indicate that we are working with the Department of Human Settlements and the other infrastructure departments so that when they rebuild, 
we are installing at the same time. I had previously indicated that we are also using the Human Settlements Depart Department for the housing beneficiary list. They are working with us to match the set-top box registration database in the province of KZN and across the country, but specifically in their response to the provinces of KZN and Eastern Cape. So, as we indicated to the court, when we went to the con court, there's nothing that we can do further in KZN and Eastern Cape to install beyond what we have until the rebuild has been done. It is, we have put our best effort, but if an area is unaccessible, it's unaccessible. If a house, if a house has been demolished, what are we going to install in? Until that house is rebuilt, we'll then go and install. That's why we're working with the infrastructure departments and human set, led by human settlements and the provincial uh, joint operations center to make sure that as they rebuild, we go there. And, and install. And that's what we have indicated in the statement very clearly. Not only in KZN, but also in the Eastern Cape. The northern part of the Eastern Cape have been, is the, I think, Oaf Tambo District, Alfred Nzo, and uh, is it Chrisan? They have severely impacted themselves by the, by, the, by, the, uh, by the floods. The difference is that their households do not qualify for what is called N NHBR registration because they are mud structures. But for us, for our purpose, as they get rebuilt, because the Minister of Human Settlements has been briefing the country on measures to assist all households, irrespective of whether their, house, their structure is NHBRC approved or an, a norm, an ordinary structure. So as Human Settlements rebuild the houses, we are there. As uh, roads and transport rebuilds the roads and bridges, because the NDPIW, using the military, we are there. And that's the coordination that we continue to do. What we have also indicated is that we have not stopped, even in KZN and Eastern Cape. The teams are walking. They walk distances of 10 kilometers, carrying a dish, carrying the gadgets to go and install, carrying a ladder. Because there are households that are not, they are not damaged, the houses, but the connectivity. For instance, in Tabankulu, in, the, in uh, Alfred Nzo, in the Eastern Cape, there's a river that nobody can cross. There is no way we can access that, that river. I'm sure you, you saw it when they were crossing with a, with a drum. And that there are households that have applied, that were sitting with, with a number in, that, in, in, in those villages. The, we can't. There's no magic we'll do. We will not blow a whistle and a bridge will be uh, put over. We can't. So there, so there is no delay in KZN and Eastern Cape in terms of our installation. They are force, what we call first module, events of nature beyond our control that makes us unable to access the areas. So there is no delay. In the Western Cape and Northern, Northwest, we have indicated SAPO has no more addresses for us to install. So what we are doing is the phase that Mr. Lechope has indicated that we are doing what we call your quality assurance and mop up. The whole of the last three weeks I've been in Northwest with the team, going post office to post office to check whether every set top box that was in a post office is moved, whether there's an address. We had to move some of them back to the warehouses because there were no addresses for us to install. And so yesterday, as we talk about yesterday, we were in Freiburg, in uh, Freiburg, Taung, uh, Swazreneke, Klekstop, that area, there was nothing. There was no more addresses for us to install in. In the previous week, we had been in Mafikeng, in Rustenburg, in Breds, in, what's the other place? Mabiskral, and Zirast. There were no addresses. There were no ad additional addresses. And this talks to the fact that, if you recall, there was a debate whether we've got sufficient stock to install, and we've maintained that we have sufficient stock for the numbers that have currently applied. And we had moved the stocks to the post offices nearest to the, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, home addresses. But without an additional home address, we cannot install. So what the teams are doing now in Northwest is to that mop up, just to make sure that if we say, give us a POD, is there a POD? No POD? Okay, fine. If we say there's stock on hand, that stock, who is it linked to a beneficiary? If not, we pull it back. If it is, we send an installer. That's what we have been doing, in the, and that's what we call mop-up, to make sure there's nobody who's left behind. So there, there is, we have no delay in Western Cape, 
and also in Northwest. We are finished because we have no more additional addresses. There is no, as we are sitting here, the analog switch of date has been shifted to the 30th of June, 2022, by the Gauteng High Court. There's no new date. We are waiting at the determination of the Concord. And on our part, we are saying to South Africa, we have done that which we are required to do to, uh, to make sure that we switch off. And what we are saying is that we have also put capacity because the registrations are very low. Well, I think we have, between March and now, we have only a total of 81,000 additional. We have got a total of 40,000 additional registration for the March, April, May, June, 40,000 additional re new registrations. So there have been those who, cl who claim that if, there is, if we switch off, there will be a surge in terms of people who come out and say, uh, they are, we don't have, we need assistance. They're doubting Thomas's. And we have indicated in this press briefing that we have capacity which is rearing and waiting. We initially, we had a thousand install. We had when we started, we had just under a hundred installers. We built up capacity to nine hundred installers, or just under a thousand installers. Now we are sitting with one thousand seven hundred installers, which may across the provinces. Not they are not counting based. These installers are based in individual provinces, and individual districts in those provinces. Which means if we have that surge, which we doubt we'll have, we have teams that are ready to go and implement at the quickest turnaround time. So as you live here, and to all South Africans, you must know that on our part, we have completed that which we have to do. As the KZN and Eastern Cape rebuilds, we are going to go back and install in those uh, provinces for the ones that have been affected by the floods. But as of now, there's nothing. We can't perform miracles in, in, in those provinces. We need the infrastructure access infrastructure to allow us to access the households, but also we need the households that are standing, that if we put a hammer through, because we, we drill, if we drill through, the structure will not collapse. And that's what the Department of Human Settlements is sorting, and that's what the military, in support of the Department of uh, uh, Transport, are sorting in terms of the road structures and the bridge structures. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for the clarity. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think, uh, I'm not sure, not unless there is another set of questions or follow-up questions, can we only take now this to be the final round uh, for colleagues that are in, in, the, in the house? Final round? Final, final? All right. Hello? Thanks, Mr. Milo. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Just, just to, for some clarity again, do you have a total figure of how many installations were done since the update in, in April in the provinces that you say is now completed? What's the figure of, of total installations? Since April. Since April. Since, since the, the last All right. Okay, colleagues, the. Those are the two last hands for colleagues that are in the house. Is there a question, another question online? No, no more questions. No more questions. Uh, so this is the last round, and those are the last questions, uh, colleagues. And it's understandable, colleagues. Minister has been briefing uh, the people of our country, I think, uh, in this media briefing and in a number of other platforms on this project. Uh, there's a lot of clarity on what the department has done. Um, thanks, Mr. Thank you. The total number installed since the last update, 267,818. Mr. Enloof. I don't know whether you call it a shack. What, what do they call it? Amacho Chombe, the other, Amacho Chombe, other places. 
and we call them mkuku, where I come from, you can drill on mkuku because there is a pole. <laughs> Remember the anchor poles. You don't put, even you, whether in where I come from, they used to do them with planks. In some areas, they do them with um, um, corrugated sheets. They, there is a pole. That's why you have them as square. There is a pole you will, you will drill on the anchoring pole. So, and we've been installing in informal settlements, uh, irrespective of the structure that is there. But why do we, we refer to, for instance, in, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of uh, houses in KZN or Eastern Cape, what has happened? A house is, is damaged or because it's on a sand, they were in sand, the soil structure is not, it's halfway. So if you drill on it, then you, because the soil structure is not strong, then it will collapse. But also there have been too much cracks on some of them that even if you drill, in fact, it's not suitable for uh, habitation. That's what we're talking about. So it's not about a shack or anything else. A, sh a shack, you we have been putting in shacks of all sh shapes and forms in, in, the, in the country. So we do not have. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. And thank you for your continuous response on this project. And we hope to see you on the other side as we conclude the September registrations. But we continue to plead with you also as members of the media to spread the message about qualifying households to register. And we are aware that the economic situation, not only of the country, of the globe has changed given the events, uh, the internet global events that have been happening and the status of households would have changed. So there are households that previously did not qualify because they had earned more than 3,500. We are calling for those households that now if you qualify, come and register. There are households that could afford subscription television because of the economic conditions then, but now they can no longer afford subscription television. We are calling on those households also to come and register. And we're saying we've got the capacity and we've got uh, both in terms of human resource, in terms of uh, the installa installation teams, but also in terms of the devices that needs to be used for us to go and install everybody. We will, but we cannot go out and procure additional without knowing what is the number that is coming. We don't want to incur fruitless and wasteful expenditure, so we are dependent on the number of registrations. If the numbers improve, we, the, the relationship between our department, our agency, USASA, who are the f uh, funding agencies through USAF, and National Treasury in terms of the approvals we require. The, it has, the turnaround time has drastically improved that if the numbers go up, we are able to, to get the approvals for, to, to bring in additional capacity. Thank you, have a lovely weekend. And uh, look after yourself. The fact that there are no more masks, it does not mean it's not flu season. It does not mean the virus is totally gone, so let's continue to be cautious and take the necessary precautions so that we don't have a resurgence of COVID-19. We cannot afford it. The economy needs to work. Thank you.